Verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Who is them? To know who them is here in this verse, we read Matthew 19, 28. It's not on the screen. We read Matthew 19, 28. Listen to this. Matthew 19, 28. So Jesus said to them, who is them? The 12 apostles. So Jesus said to them, Assuredly or truly I say to you, that in the regeneration, when the Son of Man sits on the throne of His glory, you who have followed me will also sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them, who is them? The 12 disciples of the Lord Jesus. Judgment was given to them for them to judge the people. But hang on a second. Isn't God the judge? Isn't judgment meant to be for Jesus Christ? Yes, 100%. Then how come these 12 apostles are judging, not the Lord? Well, we need to understand what kind of a judgment is given to them to judge the others. I'll tell you what kind of a judgment. The 12 apostles, people like us, born of earthly parents, father and mother, normal people, nothing special about them, none whatsoever. They had their own businesses, their own life, their own affairs, like any and every human being. So when somebody comes and says, well, Jesus Christ is different, but the 12 apostles are not to us. they like us, normal. Weak like us, sinners like us. But why will they judge not the Lord? So that none of us has an excuse to say, sorry, I did it out of weakness. I'll give an example. If one day on judgment day, Caiaphas, the high priest, who sentenced the Lord Jesus to death, crucifixion. If one day Caiaphas comes on judgment and stands before the Lord and says, you know what, Lord Jesus, please have mercy on me. I did it out of weakness. I did it out of ignorance. I did it out of whatever excuse Caiaphas would come up with. The Lord will turn to the 12 apostles and say to Caiaphas, you did it out of weakness? Well, let me tell you this. You, compared to the 12 apostles, you, you were the most educated, well embedded in the scriptures. You must have read the scriptures. You must have understood the prophecies. You must have known them. When you saw me, you should have known that I am the Messiah. Why did you go against me and deny me totally before the whole world? Yet these fishermen, some of them may be illiterate, not very well informed, uneducated compared to you, yet they accepted me. What is your excuse, Caiaphas? This is the judgment that will be passed to them. Because when any one of us come and say, I denied you, Lord, because of this, the Lord will say, well, why didn't they deny me then? Joseph, the Old Testament, now, Joseph, the son of Jacob, did you know that the Ten Commandments were not given yet? He was before the Ten Commandments. He was sold as a slave to some certain Ishmaelites merchants. They took him to Egypt, and in Egypt, he worked as a slave. Then he was thrown in prison by the interior minister of our time and age. Why? Because the interior minister's wife, who happened for Joseph to work in his own house, he worked in the interior minister's house as a slave. Now, the man, the husband, went to work. His wife, who was beautiful, stayed at home. The beautiful wife looked at the young Joseph, a handsome, young, Israelite, Jewish man, she tried to do the wrong thing with him. He absolutely rejected her. 
She flipped the story. When her husband came back, she said, this slave of yours tried to attack me and hurt me. So he takes him and throws him in prison to die there. Yet there was no Ten Commandments to say, do not commit adultery. He rejected her. Yet she chose him. What excuses do we have when he brings Joseph and say, don't answer to me. You may say, but Jesus, you are perfect man. God is all in you. You're different to me. You are born of a woman only. You don't have an earthly father. You were born without the original sin. But I was born in sin. Psalm 51 tells me that I was born in sin and in inequities. You're different, Jesus. You were born pure, holy, perfect man. Well, you say Joseph wasn't. He was like you. How come he held himself and you didn't? This is the judgment. That's why they will judge of the Lord. So no, none of us have an excuse. And if anyone who is poor, please, I beg you, we fight over materialistic things. We argue over materialistic things. I don't have enough money. I don't have a nice car. I don't have a nice house. I don't have this luxury, that price this tag, whatever it is, and we fight and argue and we cause dramas at home because of materialism. Jesus Christ, who is God revealed in the flesh, the creator of both worlds, heaven and earth, he is the owner of everything visible and invisible. His treasury house never fails and never fades away. The richest human being ever to exist he didn't even have a dollar in his pocket not even a dollar when they asked him shall we give taxes to Caesar or not he said show me a denarii a dollar you know why he asked show me a denarii because he was that poor he didn't even have a dollar in his pocket he was that poor financially materialistically he was very poor yet he is God but he never fought and never argued and he was never unhappy for being poor. Never whinged, never complained to God, why me? But did he sleep one night left behind, hungry? No. When you have God, you have everything. My son, my daughter, don't ever fight over materialistic things. God is the provider when you have him in your heart, in your life. He always provides. He will never leave you. Gain the Lord, not money. Gain the Lord, not fame. Gain the Lord, not house, not cars, not gold and linen. Gain the Lord when you have him, you have everything. Even if you live poor, you are the richest man on earth and in heaven as well when you have the Lord. So judgment was committed to them. They were people like us, but they followed the Lord till the end. The Lord will say to all of us, why didn't you do as my disciples did? What is your excuse now? No excuse. And this is why, my beloveds, when we do something wrong, we need to come to the Lord Jesus immediately and say, Lord, I'm sorry, forgive me. You know, I love you, but I'm weak. I, I did something against you, not because of the lack of love, but because of my weakness. I ask you, Lord, to have mercy on me. You know that I love you, but my weakness failed me. Have mercy on me, Lord Jesus. Forgive me, my Lord. Bring me back to you. I don't want to lose you, Lord Jesus. Whatever happens, Lord, don't ever walk away from me. Don't leave me behind. Hold on to me, Lord. Amen.